gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. It is the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A, and I want us to reflect on a very important question. What makes you special as a Christian? What is it about you as a Christian that defines you and separates you from the rest of the world? It is in answering this question that you discover your purpose, that you discover God's will for your life, and you discover the key to true happiness and peace. We offer this Mass for you and for your intentions, that God will hear you, God will bless you, and God will continue to grant you his grace and favor always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate this Mass, let us call to mind our sins let us be truly sorry for them, especially the ways we've offended one another, thereby offending God and asking for peace. Feeling sorry for our sins and willing to turn a new leaf to align ourselves with the will of God, we say, I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, God, our heavenly King, all glory 
Almighty Father, we praise you, we bless you. Holy, holy is the Lord. Jesus Christ, Son of God, only Son of the Father, Lord God, O Lamb of God. Holy, holy is the Lord. Have mercy on us, God. You will take away sin, the sins of the world. Holy, holy is the Lord. Have mercy on us, God. You will take away sin, the sins of the world. Let us pray. I want you to place yourself and place your needs before God. Trust Him. Believe that your prayer will receive a kind and favorable result from Him. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me. Terror from every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinize the loins and hearts. Let me see the vengeance you will take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great love and 
from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin, death. And thus, death has spread through the whole human race, because everyone has sinned. Sin existed in the world long before the law was given. There was no law, and so no one could be accused of the sin of law-breaking. Yet death reigned over all, from Adam to Moses. Even though their sin, unlike that of Adam, was not a matter of breaking a law. Adam prefigured the one to come, but the gift itself considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall, so many died. It is even more certain that divine grace, coming through the one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abundant free gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew, Glory to you, Jesus instructed the twelve as follows Do not be afraid, for everything that is now covered will be uncovered, and everything now hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, 
tell in the daylight. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny? And yet, not one falls to the ground without your father knowing. Why? Every hair on your head has been counted. So, there is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. So if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my Father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of men, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. On this 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time, I want us to reflect on the question, what makes you special as a Christian? What makes you special? We know from the first letter of St. Paul to Peter, the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 2, verse 19, that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a people that, is, that are set apart for God. We are consecrated. We know that. And the, the church teaches us that this consecration and this dedication that we have, we receive through baptism. But baptism is what sets us apart. It is what dedicates us specially to God. But often, there is a disparity, there is a dichotomy, there is a separation between reality and theory. There's, there's always practice and theory. In theory, we belong to God. In practice, in our day-to-day -day interaction with people, that is not always the case, or it doesn't appear to be the case. So it's important that we remind ourselves of who we are. It is this constant reminder that should, in a way, arm us, prepare us, motivate us, inspire us to always do what is right. So, I ask again, what makes you special? There are so many things we can point out, but I'll just list four that are very, very important and that should serve as the bedrock for you entering into this new week. Number one, we pray. That is one of the things that sets you apart and makes you special. We pray. As Christians, we call on God. I was just reflecting on the idea of prayer, and my new definition of prayer is God must always be involved. God must always be involved from the beginning of your day, through the difficulty of riding through traffic, through difficult and disagreeable friends and family members, meetings and encounters with strangers, all the way to the end of your day. God ought to be involved. And the way we involve God is by praying. Through prayer, we connect ourselves like a child, like a baby, like an infant in the womb, through the umbilical cord of grace to God so that we are constantly nourished, so that we are constantly strengthened, so that we are constantly in touch with God. You know, one of the things that um, I just remember sometimes and I smile is what we used to do as children. If somebody offends you, beats you, or says something that is painful or hurtful to you, you say, I will tell my daddy for you. That idea of reporting that person to someone higher than both of you makes the person a little more cautious. The person says, okay, let me leave this person be. The same way too in prayer. 
we can report others, so to speak. We can present those challenges, those difficulties before God. And that's what we see Jeremiah doing in the first reading when he says, you see how they are plotting against me. They have brought up a case against me. Most of them have risen up with vengeance against me. But I take my refuge in you, for I have committed my cause to you. Are you committing that situation to God? It is in doing so that we truly receive the blessings of God when we know that God is always involved. And one of the things I always advise, it changed my life when I realized it, prayer to the Holy Spirit. Befriend the Holy Spirit. And I say befriend because, yes, the Holy Spirit is a person. is the third person of the Blessed Trinity. So befriend him. And one of the practical ways of doing that is as soon as you wake up in the morning and your knees hit the ground, for me, kneeling down is still one of the most powerful signs of prayer. That's the most humbling thing a person can do, to kneel down. Kneel down before God and say the prayer of invocation to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill my heart. Fill the heart of the faithful and enkindle in me the fire of your love. It's a very, very powerful prayer. And trust me, there is no way your day will go that it will not be to the glory of God. Why? Because you are in touch with the Holy Spirit. The second thing is we trust in God. We trust in God. Complete trust in God. I like the way in the gospel reading today, we hear at least four times Jesus says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. In one passage, four times, do not be afraid. So trust God. No matter what is going on in your life, trust God. And I tell people when people complain, Father, I've been praying to God about this thing and it is not being answered. I say, with God, it's never about if he can. It's not about capability. It's always about when. And when, for us, is our biggest problem. When will God answer me? When? I've been praying for 100 years, if you have been praying for that long. We must understand that with God, it is only within a twinkle of an eye that he can change any situation. He can just change any situation at any moment. But what he wants to see in us especially is our ability to trust him. Do you trust God? When times get tough, do you trust God? And the truth is that we as Christians are never really, we no, never really take our faith seriously unless when we find ourselves in tribulations or trials. That's the only time we really call God. When things are going well, we forget God. We forget. But when while I come, God will not hear a word again. So we have to trust God. Always. Like I said, it's not about if he can. It's always about when. So trust him all the time. And that which you are praying for will be yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. Number three, we rely on God's grace. Grace, as we are told in the church, is a free gift of God, freely bestowed for our sanctification and salvation. Sanctification, holiness. God's grace is given to us to be holy. You know, whenever we talk about grace, it's always about the ability to do something, the capability to do something. That is secondary. The first the reason God gives us grace is so that we will be holy, that we will be free from sin, that we will be sanctuaries of God's presence. You know, there's a song um, when I was growing up, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. For you. I'm testing my, my singing skills. I'm glad it's still there. So, it's about receiving grace to be holy. That is why God gives us grace. That's the first reason. The second now is for our salvation. That we would finally, at the end of all of this life, all of life's wahala, you know, I had a white man as a novice master in my, in my spiritual year, Father Justice, and he says he loves the word wahala. That word for him means a lot more than just trouble. It's not just say, I have troubles, I have situation in my life. I have wahala. So that we go through the wahalas of life, it is only God's grace that can see us through. 
So that is why you receive grace. And not just for yourself, but in your relationship with other people, in your relationship with difficult and trying people. There are people who are going to try you. There are people who are going to test your patience. You need grace. We all need grace. No matter how, in fact, the holiest person needs more grace than the one who is not so holy. So we all need grace. We need the grace of God. And like I say, the fullness of the grace that God wants to give us is present in the Eucharist. The true body and blood of Christ. Jesus knew. And that's why he said, I am divine. You are the branches. If you remain in me, my life will flow through to you. But if you cut yourself off, if you excommunicate yourself from me, you will not have life. It's only a matter of time before you start to shrink and shrivel like dry grass, like dry wood that is only meant for, for burning. So let us continue to plug ourselves, plug yourself in to the sacraments of the church, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, the sacrament of confession. If you find out that you are remaining in a, in a sin constantly, go to confession. Be free from that sin so that you will continue to enjoy God's grace. And then finally, I mentioned this earlier and I will reiterate it. We are not afraid. As Christians, we do not allow ourselves to become silenced because of the noise of the world. The world will always make noise. This is not a pessimistic way of looking at the world, but the world will always make noise. And like I say, the world will be fine. But you as a Christian must continue to practice your faith. Do not allow other people force you into silence. Don't allow them silence you for what you know is true, what you know is good. You have to now have to, you have to find a way of being diplomatic. Don't be diplomatic when it comes to the truth. Jesus says, if you stand for me in the presence of men, I will stand for you in the presence of my father. But if you disown me, I will equally disown you. To disown God is to act contrary to the will of God. What is God saying to me in my particular situation? What is God saying to me in this particular situation? The second reading tells us that before Jesus came, there was no law. Before the time of Moses, there was no law. But then with the coming and the awareness of the presence of God, there is law, a law that tells us there is something called good and there is something called evil. You are either on the side of good or on the side of evil. You are either on the side of light or you are on the side of darkness. You cannot be in the middle. There are no gray areas when it comes to morality, when it comes to faith. You always have to pick a stand. Make a decision and do not be afraid. On this 12th Sunday, may God continue to renew you. May God continue to strengthen you and go forth and shine in the world so that God will be glorified through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us profess our faith in God. I believe, I believe in, in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord listens to the needy. He is always ready with help that never fails. We have only to ask. So let us seek the compassion of the one who cherishes even the smallest sparrow. Lord, For the church which dispenses the abundant free gift of divine grace, we pray, O Lord. Lord For nations enslaved by sinful systems of oppression and terror, we pray, O Lord. Lord For men and women who are tormented by fear and worry, we pray, O Lord. Lord Together, let us say the prayer for Nigeria in distress. All powerful and merciful Father, you are the God of justice, love, and peace. You rule over all the nations of the earth. Power and might are in your hands, and no one can stand you. We present our country, Nigeria, before you. We praise and thank you, for we are the source of all we have and are. We are sorry for all the sins we have committed, and for the good deeds we have failed to do. In your loving forgiveness, Keep us safe from the punishment we deserve. Lord, we are weighed down, not only by uncertainties, but also by moral, economic, and political problems. Listen to the cries of your people who confidently turn to you. God of infinite goodness, our strength in adversity, our health in weakness, our comfort in sorrow. Be merciful to us, your people. Spare this nation, Nigeria, from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Bless us with your kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For young people, thinking about the call to be priests or religious, and for our private intentions, let us talk to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord Father of all creation, we commit our cause to you and praise you for caring for us in our need. By giving us your own son, continue to strengthen us by his presence in our lives. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oh, 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 
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you, make, you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, with this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power for Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Save, Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred Martins, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. here. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Uh -huh. 
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. communion. I give you thanks, Holy Lord, Father Almighty, everlasting God, who has condescended to feed me a sinner, your unworthy servant, for no merits of my own, but only out of the goodness of your great mercy, with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray you, that this holy communion may be to me not guilt for punishment, but a saving intercession for pardon. Let it be to me an armor of faith and a shield of goodwill. Let it be to me a casting out of vices, a driving away of all evil desires and fleshy lust, an increase of charity, Patience, humility, humility, obedience, and all virtues. A firm defense against the plots of all enemies, both seen and unseen. A perfect quieting of all motions of sin, both in my flesh and in my spirit. A firm cleaving unto you, the only and true God, and at the end of my life, a happy death, and I pray through your compassion to bring me a sinner to that great feast where you with your Son and the Holy Spirit are to your holy ones, true light, full satisfaction, everlasting joy, consummate pleasure, and perfect happiness. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. The eyes of all look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord that what we celebrate with constant devotion 
may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My prayer for you this week is that you would invite God into every situation. You remain prayerful. You always remain unafraid, even in the face of danger. And God will continue to deliver and bless you through Christ our Lord. Amen. I also wish to use the opportunity to thank the management and staff of Royal Roots TV. May God continue to work his wonders in your life as you continue to support the ministry of the church by broadcasting the Mass every Sunday. And this is not the only thing that you do as a way of um, evangelization. There is the program Catholic Faith Forum every Sunday at 8 p.m. still on the channel. It's, a, it's more, than a, more than a big sacrifice to air this program going on six years now. So thank you so much for your contribution. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to strengthen you and continue to give you cause always to be happy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and never forget His name.